You can see right here on the screen next to you, a tier list. We all know that those are recipes for disaster. Why? Because they're based on opinion. What I think about a class may not be universal truth and will not be shared by the vast majority of people. And what usually happens is each of us will have a main class. Gluto right here plays with a Zelor. He'll come to my tier list and find Zelor not very well placed in the ranking and he'll take to his keyboard. He'll give me the business. He's not going to enjoy that. Other people that will find their class well positioned, they do not care because it makes sense to them. So what happens with tier lists is they tend to attract negativity more than anything. So I've been thinking about how can I talk about classes and do a tier list while avoiding all the pitfalls that everybody sort of falls into while doing these. And here's the solution that I have found. We will be talking about a theme. So when the servers open, people are interested in rushing the new server, doing things, reaching very far. And I've distilled it into about two kind of big modes. Some people will farm and will prioritize speed and efficiency in fights in order to level up and reach 200 the fastest possible. And some other people will be sort of trying to finish the game by racking up the maximum number of achievements and these will have different considerations they're not as mindful with speed as much as synergy between um, the characters they will play or the character they will play generally so without further ado now we will focus on a tier list to rush the new server because they are coming up in about the 3rd of april and we have some work to do in starting to think about things in general and the modifications that have happened with classes and yeah so because of all of this happening in the background I thought I'll put my research up front and then sort of give you what I have found as the most useful the most pertinent classes to play now this will be subject to discussion some people may not like my picks some people will appreciate them but all of this is thought out not about the classes themselves but more about the objectives you want to reach with the new server by picking classes of course so we will not be arguing like classes as i said so um just to explain the categories i've put up there there are some people who really like to just play individual accounts solo mono they only want to play one account and these people can fall into two categories people who want to just play the game at a slow pace they want an efficient and strong class they're not mindful with speed and those people are the solo achieves the others that are uh, that have a, an objective of reaching level 200 or doing great things in the least amount possible time these are the solo farmers they're looking for classes that can deal big damage from turn one so they can churn through um, fights as quickly as possible please do say in the comment section which one you are so that I could ask your opinion on what you do with um, that mode what classes do you play and what you prefer for elements there will be other players like myself who will have two devices two tablets or a phone and a tablet and these people also fall in two categories people who want to do the game as quickly as possible and reach end game and have all the items or people who want to do the achievements and are more mindful of synergy and not as much about time. So I'm going to try and keep things brief because I don't want it to be a 50 minute or one hour long video. I want it to be something compact that people can watch quickly, have a little idea about what they want to do with classes. On future streams before the 3rd of April, we will be talking about the game itself, we'll test it and stuff like that. But for now, we'll keep it just about classes. We will start with players who play with mono account. That doesn't mean you play the entire game solo, as in every fight you are on your own. But you just play one single class. You might solicit help from your guild mates. You might do things with friends. But you will be on your own, right? Single account. Now then, I'm going to quickly read the comments and see what Skirtap has said. I'm into PVM solo farm. So you're in the first category. I have a 200 int Ajikra and a 200 Iop strength. Oh, so two classes. I want to have enjoyable fights, deal lots of damage and AoE especially. Pick two good classes for that. And I don't see any other character doing that besides the Kra. Did you hear that, Gluto? He's absolutely right. <laughs> I'm kind of interested to try out a completely different class, but since Kra is always the way to go, I'm kind of heading toward int strength Kra right now though. 
Right, that is an excellent question. And I think I have a satisfactory answer for you, Skirt. And here's how it goes. We will start the tier list. And in there, I will put classes that if you decided to try one of them, they would complement your crowd in a fantastic way. So, for people who want to play solo PVM, as in pick one account, literally one character and do things with others, uh, solicit help from guildmates, do things on their own. The easiest answer, like Skirtap has said, and I'm gonna keep it to, to the top three, just for the sake of time. The absolute first class is a Kraw. And we said this is because of its ability. It's able to deal damage from a distance. And it can deal big damage consistently throughout the fight from turn 1. Which makes it the most desirable class for solo classes, for solo players that want to farm PVM. That want to do quick fights. We said the exploding arrow on the Kraw that we have here. The exploding arrow and the blinding arrow or two arrows that you can spam until you run out of AP and you will catch way too many uh, opponents if there are many on the map. Right. The second one and unsurprisingly is the IOP like I've mentioned earlier. And it's the second class that you happen to be playing Skr. If you're starting and you want one class that will do pretty much good in all situations, speed and favor AoE as in dealing damage in areas, Cry still your number one. The other one is the IOP. It has received a mega boost recently by uh, uh, having a new spell. So there's two things going on with it. The first one is this strength uh, storm that can deal damage and heal the IOP, so you can spam this about twice and you can also give yourself vitality so I don't see this class as an easy one to die with if you're playing it you can run away by jumping away you can vitality yourself you can deal damage and recoup a lot of health and if you play the strength variant then you also have spells that can hit in an area of effect a cross of three cells for example so the IOP is one of the top classes if you want to churn through things rapidly. Right. The top class that I will add here, and the number three, and I don't think I will add any more classes to not overwhelm you with options. And can I just say here very quickly, every class is very good in PVM. You can do all of the game's content with pretty much any class that you play. But here we have limited, we have parameters we're working with. We want to rush the new event and we're playing with one account and we're farming which means we are doing fights very quickly. So that sort of naturally removes a lot of classes from this ranking. And now on to the next and last one that I will add to the list is... Does anyone have any guess? I, th I think you can already see what I'm doing. It's the Fekka. The Fekka has had a rework recently whereby uh, the glyphs are better used now to deal damage not just one turn. You can stack two glyphs on top of each other and you can set them off in more than one way nowadays. Which means if you're facing a big group of enemies, you can catch a lot of them under one glyph and then you can set it off to deal more damage than just the glyphs themselves. It's like a type of attack that you can set off. So, back to your question, Skirt Up. If you're looking to add something while keeping performance in your team, you can swap uh, the IOP for a Fekka, and those two work very well because of the shield, the synergy in damage, and the ability to keep things uh, reduced in movement points and far away from you. And the thing, the reason why I have pretty much omitted every other classes is because they lack one of three things. The ability to deal area of effect damage, or they take too long to build up, or uh, they're not desirable as part of a group because of um, the way that they play. For example, if you pick a um, masquerader and you have two crowds with you, then you are truly struggling to play like them 
as in you will have to get close to the enemies while they're running away from them. So that puts you at a higher risk to just die and leave the other two to pick up the slack. So those will stay at the top of my list. But I'm thinking, I'm not entirely convinced that just three will do. There is another class that really caught my attention and I've spoken highly of it earlier, which is the Panda. I've told you earlier of its ability to move enemies and create zones. So while you are playing solo with an account, you can join forces with others and the Panda will make it so that you can create better areas of effect that the Kras can benefit from, that the Fekas can benefit from, that an IOP could benefit from. And also, once you create that placement, the Panda also has the ability to deal damage in AoE, which means not only does he benefit from it, but he can enhance everybody else's ability to finish a fight much quicker. Also, I have omitted... Uh, Classes like uh, Enutroth because they are good with the group, but they take time and they don't deal big damage So in terms of speed, it's not very interesting to have it It's not interesting to have a rogue because it takes time to scale up the bombs inside and they'll be be able to deal damage so the next bit is about achievements and achievements have a lot to do with dealing um, with winning fights in a very technical manner like think about the achievement clean hands where you have to kill enemies without dealing direct damage to them so that will immediately remove a lot of classes not because they're not good but because they won't deal with the most scenarios where you have to do achievements and the class that i thought will be at the top as far as this kind of gameplay is concerned will have to be the shram why do i say that most of his damage is based around traps, that means he's not dealing direct damage, he can go invisible, he can move the enemies to maximize the damage from traps, and overall, if you play just one character and you want to be as helpful as possible to others and yourself to do tricky achievements, I think the Shram is a marvelous class. The other one is the Panda, and it's no surprise to anyone. The panda has the ability to enhance everyone else's ability to deal area of effect damage, to deal big damage, and to stay alive by keeping things far away from it. So if you combine a shram that can place trap networks, a lot of traps in one area, the panda can just pick something and throw it in there, making the life of the shram easier. So if you have one class that you want to pick and help others while dealing really tricky and difficult achievements, the panda also is at the top because of this ability I've described. The third one I will pick, and this might be controversial, again, this is based on personal opinion, but it's the Kra. The ability to deal damage from a distance, the ability to push and keep things far away, without even dealing damage sometimes, makes it a useful ally. Now think about this. How many classes out there have the ability to increase everyone around it, to increase their ability to hit from long range? The Kraw has that ability. So if you have it right next to a Shram, for example, the Shram can cast its spells from a further region. Um, if you place it next to an Iop, all of a sudden the Iop does not need to get any closer. It can just deal damage from a long range. So the Kraw overall... Uh, it, accept the situation where you're doing clean hands has the ability to enhance everyone's ability to do tricky fights and keep monsters at bay. Uh, the other class I will put, and you will see this in pretty much every category I feel, <laughs> is the Fekka. The Fekka has also the ability to deal damage without directly doing it for situations like clean hands with the glyph. It has the ability to slow down the enemies with its glyphs has the ability to ensure everyone stays alive so whether you're playing direct damage or slowing down the enemies or um, running away and safeguarding everything the Fekka has pretty much the toolkit to do all of these things all at once now we've mentioned it earlier the Enripsa has a gameplay mode that lets it keep everyone alive so if you're doing a tricky difficult fight that requires setting up taking your time placing traps in the right place or positioning mobs so that you don't get nuked quickly the Enripsa is fabulous for keeping everyone alive in order to achieve that goal ultimately over time and it can also as we said give everyone ap action points which means it has gives others the ability to do more 
while staying alive you can do more per turn which is fabulous as a skill to have during the fight i'll just move this because i've thought of a lot of classes if you're doing achievements while being solo because here we're not mindful of time we don't care as much as about about finishing things quickly as much as we care about reaching an objective so the net is wider so it will catch more characters now then after the uh, Fekka and, and the Enripsa, I've thought of a very peculiar class, that is the Osa. The ability to bring about more entities in a map, of dealing position, of uh, affecting positioning, of dealing indirect damage. You're not dealing damage using an own spell, you can literally just keep flooding the map with summons that will deal damage on your behalf. Makes it a prime candidate for hard achievements like clean hands, which not many classes are able to do that deal direct damage. And as part of a team, it is good because it can not only buff its summons, but it can enhance the ability of its allies to deal damage, stay alive and move uh, further in the map. And the last one, which I think is my personal favorite, I'm going to try this class when the new server is open. Which is the Foggernaut. Whether you're playing on your own or as part of a team, this class uh, never feels alone. What do I mean by that? In every fight, you're summoning these machines that can do things with you and that you can increase the ability of to deal more damage, more heals, more shields. So while playing on your own solo, you never feel alone. And if you are in a setting with groups trying to find a balance to do a really hard fight, to kill a specific mob and do a hard achievement, then this class enhances everyone's ability to deal damage, to not get hit because it has sacrificial summons that it can post. It can bring about a Batiscaf that can shield everyone or keep everyone healed. So I think the versatility of it and the ability to uh, increase everyone's mobility makes it a fantastic class to have as part of a group, especially for technical and hard, hard fights. So it's definitely up there for me and the Foggernaut will be the class I will be playing. Let me know in the chat wh which class so far has surprised you and which one you're thinking of trying on the basis of everything I've told you today. <laughs> if such thing has happened, of course. Do for people who want to play two accounts, people like me who will play with a tablet and a phone, who will have like two characters, which two duos do you think I'm going to recommend here? Two by two. And the spirit of it is you should be able to do all the duos in dungeons, it's, a, it's, an, it's an actual achievement. But also, not only are you doing achievements, you're also doing fights in a very quick and efficient manner, so we're prioritizing speed. And as you, as you know, the moment we introduce the element of speed and efficiency, a lot of classes fall by the wayside. Obviously, the first one and the most rampant in all of Dofus, Dofus Touch, is the Double Croc. Obvious, makes sense, because you can deal so much damage, AoE, times two. <laughs> the second one is the Fekka. Plus... Why did I put these two classes together? Because they synergize so well. The croc can enhance everyone's ability to do things from a distance. The Fekka can keep the Kra alive and also lay down these glyphs that can slow down the fight and, inc and deal damage directly to them. So if you're looking for quick, rapid fights, these two classes not only deal big damage from a distance and can stay alive for a long period of time, but they synergize well with each other. You're absolutely right, Eslix. For pretty much most of the game, the Zelor falls by the wayside because of the thing that we know. Um, it is susceptible to gravity state and a lot of its spells and the central mechanic called the Telefrag just is rendered useless in most of endgame PVM. And... <laughs> and here you won't be surprised when you remember that on the game when it came out in the version 1.26, 1.27, the first guy to reach level 200 was a Fekka. This tells you this class has an ability to churn through difficult fights very quickly and even better if it's part of a team because it can shield and it can lay these glyphs that can deal damage in areas of effect. Right, we've done the double Kra, the Fekka and Kra, 
the other one that is quite cool, I would say, is... And this is a general guideline. If you have a panda, you can pretty much add any class that can deal AoE and deal big damage. And that will enhance it. Which means panda, kra, panda, feka. But just to diversify and not make it all about the kra as far as duo farming, I'm going to just put the IOP instead. And why did I choose this one in particular? These two classes have both have the ability not only to move enemies, they have the ability to increase their own MP, so the panda can increase its own MP and run further. The IOP can jump and run further. So they have this mechanic on one side. On the other side, the IOP has good AoE damage, but only if there is someone with it that can place things to maximize that effect. So it deals big damage in an area of effect, and then the panda can place things to make the most out of this. So these two synergize so well. If you want to do quick, rapid fights, and farm the game, reach level 200 quickly or faster than others. No surprise again, you will see the Fekka make another appearance, but this time with a peculiar... Oh, remember, all of this is in the spirit of what classes can do in Dofus Touch. It's not just about the normal Dofus or anything else, it's also Dofus Touch. The Fekka and the IOP. Why these two? Glyphs? plus AoE from the um, uh, IOP means that the IOP can deal AoE and it can spend less time shielding itself, protecting itself, increasing its own vitality. It's like the Fekka tells the IOP you can just focus on dealing big damage, I will slow them down, I will lay down my glyphs and I will keep you shielded so you can live longer and not have to worry about using your own action points to stay alive. You can just focus on dealing damage purely. The other one that I play myself in the official server when I started, these were my first two classes. And I did say I wasn't going to put Kra all over the place, but here there is a specific synergy I wanted to mention for people who were looking for a different kind of gameplay. A Kra can reach all the map, right? It's the archer, it can increase its own ability to hit from afar, and it runs and deals big damage. But it has a big weakness, if something charges you quickly and gets close to you, then the crab becomes very vulnerable and borderline useless. But if you put a class next to it, that has the ability to slow everything down, reduce the enemy's movement points, and that also happens to have the ability to give AP, to give MP, to increase the damage of its allies, all of a sudden you have a crowd that can't be reached, that can deal not only its own big damage, but even more damage and do more attacks per turn from even further. So the synergy between the Kra and the Enotroph makes it one of the absolute best duos in all of Dofus. And I think they are carrying on this theme in Dofus Touch as well. And for the spirit of farming rapidly, as I said earlier, a lot of classes just fall by the wayside. Things like... Uh, Classes like um, the Oza Modus that can become a bit useless in end game because its uh, summons die quickly, so it's always having to replenish and resummon. You're not building up damage. Uh, the Rogue who will need to place bombs that can all of a sudden uh, be killed. It relies on them staying alive so that it can deal big damage. All of these classes, I'm not saying they're bad, I'm saying in the parameters we've set ourselves, in the spirit of farming quickly to reach level 200 when rushing a new server, these classes are not the best picks. They are good classes, you can do everything with them, but if you're looking at speed and efficiency, you might not want to play a class that needs 4 or 5 turns in order to start dealing big lines of damage. You will prioritize classes that can deal that from turn 1. And just as an aside, I will put a bracket here and put the panda here at the edge. Uh, this is not the fastest, but I wanted to mention it still for people who do not care about speed but will still farm with two classes. If you have the panda and add pretty much any class that you can see here and have the panda in a specific kind of gameplay called a tank, which means it has a lot of health points, it has a lot of resistances, then you're not worried about sending the panda in the middle of the, the enemies. You send him there, he collects them, he keeps them locked nearby, 
and then whatever other class you play can build up its damage over time. It has an easier time waiting to deal bigger damage. And then it doesn't matter what class you play. You can play Zelor if you want. You're less likely to be affected by the uh, by uh, the gravity state because you're not close. The panda is close. Pretty much any other class you can pick them. So if you want to farm the game and reach 200 in a duo setting, that could be an option if your class is not a speedy one like the Rogue or the Foggernaut or the Sadida. You can always add a Panda to play the other class to the fullest while enjoying all the benefits of that class without worrying about it. Right, the question keeps coming up. This is the last category is a question that has been posted so many times on Discord, I've seen it on Reddit. I want to play two accounts. What is the most opti to do all of the dungeons of the game and do all of the achievements in the game? Do you see that's different from speed and it's different from uh, uh, churning fasts very rapidly or efficiently dealing big damage turn one. So here we're going to completely change the mechanic. The first one will strike you as a surprise, but the any is there, as we said, because of its ability to enhance the action points of its allies and the ability to keep them alive for as long as possible. And I'm going to combine it with the Shram, because in my opinion, having looked at the spell kit of the Shram in Dofus Touch and what it can do, it is the absolute best class for achievements not only because of clean hands, but because of its ability to set up a type of play using traps that can finish hard fights or big fights in the fraction of a second. It, it's a big long curve in order to appreciate and learn how to play the class properly. But the moment you get there, you combine the invisibility to win a couple of turns to set up your traps properly. The Aneripsa can keep you topped up alive and keep things uh, pushed away. And then the power of the SRAM means you can sort of finish fights in the fraction of a second by benefiting from what the Aneripsa lets you do, remain alive. And I think this not only combines efficiency as in you can do most of the duos and do all the achievements, but you can also do them in the speediest of manners because of the synergy between Aneripsa and the traps of the SRAM. This will strike nobody as a surprise. And we have seen this throughout the history of Dofus, even the one that I play, 2.0. We have Panda, and next to it we will flip because we're no longer mindful of speed. We will look for the slowest class that can do the biggest damage over time. Because now we have time, the Panda will allow us to have time. Which one do you think it is? I've mentioned that multiple times before, and I've not put it anywhere in this tier list purely because it's the slowest one to build up big damage. It's the Rogue. So we will add the Bomb Master to the mix here. And what we'll do essentially is something quite similar to the Aneripsa and Shram. Here, the Panda is going to make it so that the Rogue has time to place the bombs in the right places and grow them to the size that can deal incredible damage. So the Panda enables the Rogue to have the thing that uh, disqualified it from the farm uh, because of speed. It gives it the time to set up its play properly. And the next one, Panda again, and Echo Flip as well. This might be a surprise. So we've talked about the panda and the bombs, how panda can throw things inside the bombs and sometimes the bomb can get lost, but the panda lets you win the time to properly keep them alive and max them out in terms of size. Here, sorry, um, just, I don't have any water. Uh, the next one, the panda plus echo flip. Why did I put echo flip here? Uh, if we want to talk about the Echo Flip, it's a crazy class based around the luck thing that we've mentioned earlier. But Echo Flip is one of the classes that has lifesteal, which means it is able to deal damage while keeping itself alive. It can push with its own damage, it can reduce MP in some circumstances, but it has a spell called. A spell called. What is it called again? Smell, which gives it the ability to 
reduce what it can do this turn in order to prepare for the next turn where it can have big blitz turns. That means it will remove AP this turn, but it will gain it back the turn after. And oh my god, when you have a lot more MP than your time allows you in a single turn on an Echo Flip, with the life regen means you can sustain yourself for hours while doing a tedious difficult duel while dealing big damage and killing things and it also has beautiful spells that can deal area of effect damage and it can sustain itself not only by heal also by the echo flip slug which can keep it alive in difficult situations and it also has the cat that can summon that it can summon and sustain it as well, contribute to the damage or contribute to the heals. And I think this is where we're going to leave this. Uh, if you have any questions, please pop them in chat because I've only allowed one hour and I think and I feel like I have covered pretty much the um, essence of how I will approach the new servers when they come out. For the solo farm speed, if you're looking for quickness, Either you're playing on your own or you sometimes help allies or get into groups to do things. But you always prioritize speed. Go for a crop, IOP, Fekka and a Panda. Or a mixture of all of these. Because they have area of effect damage that you can start from turn 1 using. You don't have to build up your damage. And the Panda, while sharing this characteristic, can also enhance the other's ability to do proper AoE with placement by picking something up and throwing it next to another one so that on the IOPS turn he can hit both or on the cross turn he has an easier time hitting everyone else within the map. Just to summarize as well, the PVM solo achieves. If you're solo and you want to join others or do things on your own in order to scoop up as many achievement points to be max achieved, uh, the classes I've put here are super efficient. Forget about time, it's efficiency and ability to do hard achievements as part of a group or on your own. The Shram with its traps is the king in my opinion. The Panda with its positioning, the ability to slow down play. The crack can deal big damage and can also enhance the other's ability to hit from a distance which can come in handy for hard dungeons like Count Harburg or Free Ghost 3 kind of stuff. The Fekka is a classic, it's one of the absolute most versatile classes. It can keep everyone alive, it can place glyphs that will hit in multiple elements, or can have other effects like reducing the enemy's movement. The Eneripsa as part of a group, if an achievement requires you to stay alive for 200 turns, you don't want to have any other class next to you than an Eneripsa, because it will keep you topped up, it will keep you able to run away, able to do more with your turns. The Osa Modus, purely because it shares the characteristic of the SRAM. It has the ability to summon things that can do damage on its behalf and that makes it really good with clean hands and it can also act as a support class with its own allies which is brilliant. For the very same reason, the steamer, but I'll give it extra points because I'm more curious about it. <laughs> I, much, I much prefer the mechanical summons that uh, do different things. One can shield, one can heal, one can deal damage. And they also enhance the steamer's ability to deal damage, so it's less reliant on its summons like the Osamo does. But it's still a fantastic one for achievements that require um, specific fights to be done or hard tasks to be performed while playing in a group. Steamer, mwah, and I think it will be the class I will choose in order to play. On the new server, of course. Duo farm, we're back to speed again, and here you can see the crow makes another comeback. The panda and the feka, the top four classes we've put here for solo farm are also good for duo farm, no surprise there. And we have a surprise appearance of the Enutroph, who synergizes extremely well with the crow because it slows everything down and it enhances the crow's ability to deal damage and do more with its turn. And here again, I'm going to remind just because I've already put it there. If you're farming and don't mind as much speed on every single individual fight, a panda plus anything else that can build up damage can also be quick. Like if you have a rogue that will place its own bombs and build them up quickly while the panda holds everything back, you can just throw things 
into the volcano and kill them all very quickly. So it can be speedy, but the threshold for skills is a bit high. So don't expect to start a Pandan Rogue, for example, and start doing things in 30 seconds immediately. It's not going to happen. You need to learn how to play the Panda and especially how to play Rogue and the skill around keeping everything alive while building up to your ability to deal big damage, which can be achieved via time. So you can't cut corners there. And the last category, which is PVM, Duo Chiefs. So you have two characters, a tablet and a phone like I will do, and want to do achievements. So hard tasks that require a lot of thinking, coordination and things like that. I've put the Shram and Enerypsa because they synergize well. Heals plus AP combined with the Shram's ability to go invisible and set up little trapped areas. If anyone walks on them, they instantly die. This synergy right here makes them my favorite and I highly recommend them. The other one that comes next, I've described it earlier for speed farming, but it's questionable. You need a lot of skills and knowledge in order to achieve it in a farm setting. However, if you're not pressed with time and you want to play these two characters, they are fantastic for dual achievements. As in, the panda can hold everything back, while the rogue sets its game up properly, get the bombs in the right positions, get the glyphs going, and then the panda picks an enemy, throws it in there, and it's dead. And then you can do hard achievements using this very technique. And the last one to end on will be uh, the panda and Ekaflip. As we said, uh, the Ekaflip has the fantastic ability to lifesteal, as in, you deal damage, so you are lowering the HP of your enemies while increasing yours, so you don't need a healer. You can just keep playing like that, coupled with its ability to summon a cat that can keep everyone alive or deal damage, and add on top of that the uh, smell spell. Is, that, is it called smell? Yes, the smell spell, which reduces its ability to do things now, but increases the ability to blitz almost anything next turn makes it a fantastic one for duo achievements so hard tasks while playing duo sorry just to quickly get the uh, called up oh. oh. pc just slept so we have reached the end of this pvm rush new event that has been separated into solo and duo and then out of those two, we have categories for speed farmings that rely on quick damage, AoE and quick fights to finish. And the other one in which people take their time and do achievements, hard fights that require specific kind of things from you and your team. This is all for me. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. And I can say I'm incredibly excited for the adventure with every single one of you that is happening very soon. As you all know, on the 3rd of April, a new server, an English server in Dofus is releasing, which is outstanding. <laughs> I will be there. I will have a fog or not. I'm thinking about another class, but I might need to get a tablet so I don't play on two phones. It's a bit too small for me and I'd like to appreciate a big size while playing. Um, so yeah, I will be there. Uh, we will start a, um, an, a, a three week journey where we will have some things to do all together. And if we hit them, then we will unlock some fantastic rewards, some cosmetics, some brilliant things that will be exclusive to this event. So I will count on you to keep me in check and tell me, let's go and do them. Let's hit this. Benefit me from your knowledge. Make sure that we all, the team Single Malt, which is composed of Eslix Gaming, we have Washington, we have Challenger X, who's a fantastic all-time Dofus um, touch player, and Mr. Black as well. All of us will be contributing and trying to rush this event over the next three weeks after the release on the 3rd of April in order to unlock all of the rewards. I want everyone that is jumping onto the Epsilon server to play in full English and Office Touch to enjoy having content creators that will aid and accompany them through that journey and also make sure that we unlock the rewards alongside of you as well because, well, we want some cool cosmetics. <laughs> Right, uh, I do have a, um, we do have a Discord that I use, well, we mainly use it for Dofus that I play, the other one, Dofus 2.0 on PC, but I will be creating a little channel, a dedicated channel 
for this event for the office touch so we can discuss talk share knowledge when we're not streaming when we're not live so that we're always prepared so that when we're live we can do the most out of that one or two hours and hit as many goals as possible yes so i will not do this all, all by myself as i said we have a handful of fantastic beautiful people and we will see more of them on upcoming lives it's just the timing of this announcement is a bit awkward for most people to either be here watching or participate in it but i will turn all of this into a video that we'll post on youtube and make sure to link it on reddit and on discord so please feel free to join us i will create the channel towards the end of the day and um also, I do stream Dofus 2.0 on Thursdays and Fridays, but I will try and add a couple more days, at least for the first three weeks of the new event starting from the 3rd of April to rush this event, complete it and see if we have a fantastic community feel, we've hit all of our goals together, then maybe Dofus Touch is the new game that I play on my phone, no more Clash Royale, that gets uninstalled, Dofus Touch comes in. Boom, and the adventure continues. There might be some streams in the future. I don't know exactly how that will go.